seven. Beard outside, the switch. Donchich goes, oh, what a great step! Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back to a brand new video. I hope all of you guys are doing well. Thank you so much for tuning into this video. I'm very excited to talk about this topic because I feel like this player isn't talked about enough when it comes to the New York Knicks world. You could say there's reasons behind that, but obviously in the broad NBA world, I feel like he's not talked about at all because I feel the casual NBA fan does not know who this player is. Almost said his name there. Like at least bring some anticipation to this video, even though you see the name in the title, there, there still has to be some anticipation when you're watching this video. But thank you to every one of you guys that click that subscribe button, smash the like button and leave down below in the comment section, positive feedback, and even shout out, shout out to the haters out there. I know not everyone's gonna agree with my takes when it comes to New York Knicks world, but I know one thing we could agree, agree, agree upon we want what's best for this New York Knicks team, or we just want this team to be good in the present and moving forward. We don't want this team to just be good for a couple years unless it results in an NBA championship. We all obviously want that. We haven't had that since 1973 when my dad was freaking like four or five years old during that time. We, but we want to win games. We want this team to be successful. And I got some hate on my previous video, but it's okay. It's a part of what comes with YouTube. Maybe you don't like my outlook. I'm a different kind of Knicks fan compared to other Knicks fans out there. There's the Knicks fans that are cheerleaders, and I'm not hating on these people, but there's Knicks fans that are cheerleaders, and whatever move Leon Rose makes, Scott Perry, whoever we go on to draft, they're going to support that decision, and obviously I'm going to support that player, whoever we go on to draft, but I'm that Knicks fan. When Leon Rose makes a move, I'm not going to always say, oh, that's the right move just because the Knicks made it. No, I'm going to give you my real opinion. I, I could, I'm going to say when I don't like the move, I'm going to say when I do like the move, when a player's playing bad, I'm going to let, let you guys know when a player's playing bad. I'm not going to make excuses, but when they're playing good, I'm going to let you know when they're playing good. You guys know I was really tough on RJ Barrett this past season. I'm a very in the moment person, but when he was playing good, yes, I gave him credit. Julius Randle, one of the most polarizing players in the NBA, you could say right now, or on the New York Knicks when he struggled. Yeah, I bashed him when he played good. I gave him credit. Because at the end of the day, these players are human. They know when they're struggling. But anyway, let's get into the topic. It's a very interesting topic. And it is Miles McBride. What's on my mind when it comes to Miles McBride? So Miles McBride went on to be drafted in the 2021 NBA draft. And that draft was interesting. A lot of maneuvering went on in that draft. We traded back, got Quinn Grimes, or you said we traded back a couple times. We got Quinn Grimes, we got Miles McBride, and we got Jericho Sims. When it came when it came to that draft, and I actually really like that draft. If I'm being completely real with you guys, and my stance on Miles McBride coming out when the Knicks went on to went on to draft him, I liked him as a point guard coming out of West Virginia. Not just because we needed a point guard, but he fit Tom Thibodeau when it came to a mental mindset. Like like he's tough physically, strong dude. Despite only being six foot one, he he played extremely strong out there on the floor. Mentally tough. You need that to deal with New York. And, mo and the, the best thing of all, played great defense. On ball, bulldog type of defender. We needed that. And Tom Thibodeau loves defensive players. And where do I stand right now when it comes to Miles McBride? Because I go on Twitter, there's some big time Miles McBride stands. Why doesn't Miles McBride play? He deserves to play. You bring a great element to this basketball team. So when I think about Miles McBride, his defense, on ball, uh, as an on ball defender, gets up in your jersey, also picks you up full court. He's a competitor. That's what I love about my, about Miles McBride. He's not the most physically imposing or physically gifted guy in the world, even though despite him only being six foot one, looks a little shorter. I believe he does have a decently long wingspan. It's like six foot eight, if I'm correct on that, thinking back of, of when I talked about him and did more research on him when he was coming out of West Virginia and made that video. So he's not the most physically gifted guy in the world, but he plays extremely hard and you definitely need to respect that when it comes to Miles McBride and he's very good fundamentals he reads the passing lanes very well but he's not put in the position to get minutes right now with this New York Knicks team obviously you take a look at the starting point guard position Jalen Brunson has that locked up you have Derrick Rose who could possibly be the backup guard alongside an Emmanuel Quickly and Quickly may be the back backup guard but I still see there being lineups coming off the bench of D Rose and Quickly together, or Quickly and D Rose together. You can maneuver whoever you want at the shooting guard position, and there's also going to be interchangeable parts, or there's going to be substitutions that Quickly may be leading at that point guard position, and D Rose remains on the bench in certain situations. If, if you understand where I'm coming from there, at times they're going to be out there together, and then there's just going to be one guy 
leading the ship at the point guard position. And you also think on top of that, short in rotations and McBride barely played last season. But I guess the other side of the coin you could look at, D. Rose hasn't consistently stayed healthy in his career. He's continuing to get older. Miles McBride still a solid emergency policy player to have. So when I'm going off of the small sample size of what I saw Miles McBride, if it was versus the Thunder, if it was versus the Rockets, the games that I've seen Miles McBride play in, the defense translate, the, the translates. The defense is perfectly fine. I don't have an issue with that at all. And when they have played Miles McBride, you've noticed it hasn't been at the true point guard position. And I can understand why. There's not, like, the New, the New York Knicks, like, yes, we can get on Tom Thibodeau about being stubborn. But if you watch Miles McBride play, I do not think he's ready to be a lead guard in the NBA in any role consistently. That's just my opinion when I watch McBride play. There's a reason why he's being played off the ball at times. Us fans think we know it all. At the end of the day, Johnny Bryant, he understands what he sees. Greer understands what he sees. Tom Thibodeau, he knows what he sees. There's times maybe you're we're like you're a moron and we're right in certain situations, you know, which are pretty obvious. And then there's other situations like, yeah, maybe Tom Thibodeau's right. So the number one thing that's holding McBride back from being a lead guard, despite like we're talking about on the court right now per production, what we even saw in the summer league. You're playing up against downgraded competition, but it's still professionals out there on the floor. And you could say you should dominate that downgraded competition. The offenses are more vanilla. They're kind of more of exhibition games, even though you're still running playbooks out there and certain sets you may, may see, even though you played with Do Dice Yashimoto, who was coaching the team, or Dice Yashimoto was coaching the summer league team. The number one Achilles heel with McBride. He's six foot one. He's strong for six foot one though, and has a solid wingspan. He plays extremely hard. He plays bigger than his size. But when he's the lead guard, he can distribute the basketball. He can make solid reads. He actually does a good job running the pick and roll. But when you're six foot one and you're not the most physically gifted, you're not the most athletic in the world. You know, you're not some like Ben Simmons sized lead guard. When you're not like a Luka Doncic sized lead guard as well. You know. You, you got to be able to create separation consistently off the dribble, cr create your own shot consistently off the dribble. And he hasn't been able to consistently create separation. He hasn't. He has shown times, but it's not consistent. And that is scary for someone that is six foot one. You should be able to have a step back. You should have a go-to move. And his handle is not tight enough, in my opinion, as well to create separation. This is just a fan, though. I'm not some scout, obviously, or work in any NBA front office. But this is based off of what I saw. And him not being able to consistently create separation or create his own shot off the dribble, like at least, like at least mid-range territory on the outside, he has shown that he can straight line drive. But there's not much wiggle. There's not much twitch when it comes to getting to the basket with Miles McBride. I'm going to be giving you guys a positive, like, this may sound like a bashing video. No, we didn't draft this guy in the top 10. I wasn't expecting him to be anything crazy or anything like that. But this is just for some people that may want the answer, why does McBride barely play? And I'm not just talking about the substitutions or the rotation, but obviously what we see out there on the basketball floor as well. So I think his playmaking is solid enough to be a lead guard, but offensively, it's a huge Achilles heel. Even in the games that he has appeared in, there's just moments like in the shot clock winding down and he's in panic mode trying to create separation and he can't do it. So he has to hoist up a shot and it's a brick. But I will say he has solid enough mechanics to play off the ball. And I think that's one of the key reasons why Tibbs played him off the ball when he did play. Yes, he had games that he had games that he brought up the basketball and he even had a game that he started at the point guard position. But due to when you saw the substitu substitutions, when you saw rotations, you saw a lot of them off the ball because he has solid mechanics. I do think he's a solid shot and he does a decent job relocating, especially for someone that's a point guard. And that was kind of the thing coming out of West Virginia as well. Is he a lead guard? Is he a, is, is he a shooting guard? He was kind of a little bit of a combo guard com coming out of West Virginia when you took a look at things. So what can McBride's role be? I think it's okay to hold on to him as an emergency policy player because you never know what's going to go on to happen with health. It's always good to have depth on your basketball team, which I believe the New York Knicks do have when it comes to just multiple positions out there on the floor, especially the center position, which I really like for depth. You got Obi Toppin, obviously, as a backup. You got Grimes coming off the bench when it comes to that shooting guard position. Like, we have depth, for sure, even the point guard position. Just, you, you can't knock that. 
So I would like to hold on to McBride as an emergency po policy player if D Rose gets hurt, because there's worse options out there than Miles McBride. Because Miles McBride provides you defense. He knows the system. Obviously, it's about to be it's about to be his third year under Tom Thibodeau, or second year under Tom Thibodeau. And when you just take take a look at things. McBride could be that energy plug and play type of guy. Maybe he's not out there for 20 minutes, but let's say your team's struggling defensively. There's not much motivation out there on the floor, which your team should always be motivated. But let's say it's one of those situations. Tibbs might throw him in there to bring you a spark defensively, get up in someone's jersey, pickpocket someone, picking them up full court, lay it up and in, or find someone cutting or something like that. So I think McBride could be a nice spark plug, energy type of guy that's like, he is a he's a pest for someone that's six foot one. I like to think of him as like a lighter Marcus Smart, like a little bit lighter Marcus Smart, not weight wise, but like production wise. But he's he's still young, and even though I do think age is overrated when it comes to a player poten player's potential, like yes, you could always get better when it comes to the mental part of the game, when it comes to just improving your moves out there on the floor but sometimes I just kind of hate that when you clearly see the eyeball test of a player and it's just like he has a long way to go but it's like oh he's only 19 years old but how many years is it going to take him to get to a certain level you know especially when you're under contract will another team look at the pet potential you know it's just very interesting to take a look at but I wanted to talk about Miles McBride I love his defense but I feel like the true Achilles heel six foot one just the rotation the way it's set up and there's better players ahead of him right now. And he can't consistently create separation or create his own shot off the dribble. Straight line drive guy. Play solid defense. I'm not see, I'm not trying to label him as anything, but I feel like that's just the situation he's in right now. I'm rooting for him though. Seems like a great dude. Plays extremely hard. And Tibbs loves that. Let me know down below your thoughts on Miles McBride. Peace out, y'all.